fellow explorers. We're on a six day road trip in the heart of California, California's Central Valley. I'm Chris, this is the Traveling Princess, and in this video, we're gonna show you around the really neat almond blossoms that are here this time of year, tasty almond foods. We're gonna show you other foods here, because this is like where food is grown and made in California. We're gonna check out the neat roadside attractions that you would driving along California Highway, but we are starting in Bakersfield. And the first stop is Buck Owens Crystal Palace, right next to that Bakersfield sign. But we have to come back here later because they don't open till five o'clock. So let's go head out and check out the rest of Bakersfield. Traveling Princess, are you ready? All right, let's go. We heard Bakersfield was a big oil town, but wanted to see it for ourselves. Here at Panorama Park, looking out this way, are oil fields as far as the eye can see. I've literally never seen so many oil pumps all in one place. In addition to this view, there's also lots of neat hikes here in Panorama Park. You can hike from the top to the bottom along the river right there. We've seen a few people, looks like a, enjoying getting a good workout. Speaking of roadside attractions, we're at our first one now, the 26 foot tall Native American statue in front of Ethel's Old Corral Cafe. This is a piece of Bakersfield history. It has been in Bakersfield for decades. It originally started as an advertisement in front of Mohawk Tires. In 2001, it was refurbished and put here in front of Ethel's Old Corral Cafe. You know, I feel like part of the fun of a California road trip is seeing these sorts of attractions. Nobody would come to Bakersfield just to see the 26 foot tall Native American statue, but when you're driving by or driving near, it's worthwhile to make a stop. And for us, this is just right below that panorama park from the view right next to all those oil rigs that interestingly enough, that area is named Oildale. Very fitting. We wanted to learn a little bit more about the history of this oil town and the Kern County Museum has a whole exhibition about oil production here in Kern County, which is where Bakersfield is in. It is interestingly enough in the old oil supply store and inside you can see like how they make drill bits. You could see how they used to live in these tent cities. It's a pretty neat exhibition. And now just outside of the oil museum in the rest of this Kern County Museum, it's an open air museum where they've taken a lot of classic buildings and brought them here. One of the coolest ones is the general store, that green building back there. You can go inside, it's fully furnished. I mean, you can see it through glass, but it's pretty neat to see what an old general store looked like. And that's also where people used to get their mail, not at the post office, but at the general store. Now, if you like trains, or as the traveling princess might say, choo-choos, make sure to get to the outskirts. They've got some old trains. This is a locomotive from 1898. And if you do plan to come to this museum, make sure you get here early. At the time we made this video, last admission was at three, and they close at four. But it's well worth a visit. For dinner, we stopped by Salty's Barbecue. What do they make? They make really good tri-tip. Tri-tip over an open flame as it is Central California style. But if you want to check out Salty's, definitely check out their Salty Special. It's a sandwich that has tri-tip pulled pork coleslaw on a garlic bread roll. Spicy, really delicious. They cook the tri-tip over oak. They cook the ribs over almond wood, and those are really good too. Actually, everything we had was super delicious. By the way, if you wanna see more about the stuff that we're eating, we've got a whole video about the food we ate on this trip. You'll find a link to that in the description or at the end of this video. For our first night's sleep, we checked into the Padre Hotel. This is the It Hotel in Bakersfield. It's located in downtown in the center of all the nightlife next to the iconic Fox Theater. It was built in 1928, has some really hip, funky vibes because it was remodeled in 2010. If you're looking for a classic hotel to stay in that isn't like all the other chains, definitely check out the Padre on your trip. It's day number two, we're heading up to Fresno to check out the Blossom Trail, but we stopped at our second roadside attraction, the seven-story tree house at Bravo Farms. Yes, this is on a tree. It is seven stories, definitely fun for the kiddos. There's a gift shop here, there's a restaurant here. So, you know, thinking about this, I do hotel reviews. Maybe I should expand to tree house reviews. So as you come in the second floor, you see there's a really narrow staircase and it just gets smaller and smaller. And then when you get up seven stories, you get this little room up here. It actually opens up nice and big and you can be rewarded with a view of the almond blossoms down there and the Highway 99. It is a farm, so you'll find plenty of animals here, rabbits, chickens, and even a llama. Hi, Mr. Llama. So after finishing lunch at Bravo Farms and conquering the seven story tree house, we visited Fresno to check out the Blossom Trail here, almond blossoms and a lot of orange trees. Prini, we are heading up next to Modesto. I'll see you there for dinner.
So on our way to Modesto, we got caught up in a little traffic, but it gave us a great view on the right-hand side of the California high-speed rail, that big bridge in the back. That's the high-speed rail. If you thought nothing was happening, it sure is. And you know what's even cooler with this view? You can actually see the almond blossoms there right between the pillars of the high-speed rail bridge. After that really good dinner, we checked into the Doubletree in downtown Modesto. This is the tallest building around. We're on the 10th floor, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what's out that window tomorrow morning. Should be a nice view. Trailing Princess, who are you calling? Probably somebody to tell them how great dinner was. And that view out the window is pretty nice, waking up to all of downtown Modesto right there. We stopped to get a shot of the downtown arch, then we headed over to the Blue Diamond gift shop to see all of their almond products on display. They have quite a lot of almond items at Blue Diamond. And then we stopped over to my favorite almond blossom farm, Rodine Farms, where we had a lot of fun in the blossoms. The traveling prince has got to ride on their blossom train. Where else can you ride a mini train through the blossoms? And then for lunch, we stopped at Oakdale Cheese, got the Traveling Princess's favorite grilled cheese sandwich. Can you tell this trip with a two-year-old is all about her? It's one of the things I've learned as a dad is that if baby's happy, then parents are happy. You know, she who wears the diapers is the one that's really in charge. So for dinner, after a grueling day of looking at the almond blossoms in Modesto, I mean relaxing day of looking at the almond blossoms in Modesto, we came to Stockton to the Garlic Brothers, which is a waterfront dining restaurant. You know, I did not know that Stockton has a waterfront, but it turns out Stockton is the world's most inland port. Actually, ships need to come 120 miles inland to dock here, but big ships do dock in front of Stockton. So there's neat waterfront dining here at Garlic Brothers. Right here, we have the artichoke dip right here. Garlic artichoke dip. It's called Garlic Brothers. Mm, it's hot. It's garlicky. If you like garlic, you will like this. Mm. We got their version of garlic bread. This is, they call it some bread. So it's got garlic bread with cheese and tomatoes on it. Maybe a little bit more healthy version of garlic bread or seemingly, we have grilled oysters right here. If we take a look at one of these grilled oysters, let's go ahead and dive into this one right here. Mmm, that's good, I like it. They're from uh, Pacific Northwest, so from the Pacific Ocean. So if you find yourself in Stockton, um, you know, check out Garlic Brothers for a really nice view, some tasty food. Oh, and a lot of local beers on tap. After dinner, we checked into the University Plaza Waterfront Hotel that maybe doesn't look like much at night, but in the daytime has amazing views of the San Joaquin River. This little part of the river that it's on really could look like a bay. And you know what, I mentioned this is an inland port, so technically you actually could get from here all the way out to the Pacific Ocean through the San Francisco Bay. Fellow explorers, it's day number four and we're taking a stroll at the University of the Pacific. Why are we here? We are not looking for schools for the traveling princess yet, a little too early, but we're here to relive some Hollywood history. This building, this was the office of Indiana Jones in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Stockton was actually known as the Hollywood North of the day because this is a really Ivy League looking campus in California. So if you want to see some Ivy League in California, you don't have to go to the East Coast, just come to UOP. One unique attraction on the UOP campus is this echo chamber. It's just behind Burns Tower, the iconic building in the center of the campus. And hopefully you can hear it in this microphone that when you stand in the center of these six columns, everything echoes right back on you from these six columns. <laughs> this attraction is Traveling Princess approved. One thing that makes the campus even more Ivy League, the clock tower that bells on the hour. That's coming from the Burns Tower, tallest building on campus. Roadside stop number three in Stockton, just off the Highway 99, is the Stockton Cambodian Buddhist Temple. There's a whole bunch of artwork they've got here that tells the story of Buddha through a number of statues, but the most impressive one is this one. This is the 54 foot long reclining Buddha I've never seen anything like this in California. I've seen things like this in Thailand and in Asia, but if you've never had the pleasure of seeing one of these in person, it's big, it's impressive. Definitely worth a stop when you're driving by Stockton. Mission to the temple is free and they have clean restrooms, which makes it an ideal roadside stop. So while we're in Stockton, we heard there's a really cool museum here. It's this one, the Hagen Museum, that actually has a ton of amazing art here in Stockton. This 
is American art here. Some of the most famous artists in here, Bierstadt, this picture actually hung in the Reagan White House. When Ronald Reagan was in the White House, he wanted something that reminded him of California, and so he had this painting of Yosemite. Because the Hagen family was of Turkish descent, it's believed that's why they really bought a lot of artwork in the Orientalist movement. Not only did they just donate money to the museum, this was a lot of the artwork that they had in their own houses. And the Hagen Museum is actually known for having some of the best Orientalist artwork of any museum. They actually loaned out this to the Getty when they had an exhibition on Orientalist art. Up on the second floor, they have the country's longest running student art exhibition that has student art from the region. When the traveling princess gets in the first grade, I'm getting her to submit something here. But one of the exhibits that is the most popular up here, so this is kind of like a can't miss exhibit, is the J.C. Linebecker exhibit. You may look at these artworks and think, hey, this looks like Norman Rockwell. And if you think that, it's actually because Norman Rockwell was inspired by J.C. Linebecker. And really, he was most famous for magazine covers, just like Norman Rockwell, because Norman Rockwell respected him so much, Norman Rockwell made one less magazine cover for the Saturday Evening Post than J.C. Linebecker. The Traveling Prince's favorite exhibit is definitely the Kellogg's Kids. These are the kids that were on the Kellogg's boxes. I think they all look so cute, except, except this one. He looks kind of creepy. So before this trip, I'd never heard of the Hagen Museum. Seems like a small regional museum, but let me tell you, there's a lot of world-class art in this place. So if you're coming through the Central Valley, make sure to check this place out. Definitely worth a stop. For lunch before leaving Stockton, we stopped by Fat City Brew and Barbecue. They're famous for a lot of their meats, but they do little slider portions if you wanna try a few different meats, that's cool. It's a mom and pop shop we met mom who works here. Come and take a look at this brisket sandwich. The brisket sandwich, uh, they also put cheese on it and it's got mayo and barbecue sauce, which is interesting. So let's dive into this, see how this tastes. Mm. It's a tender brisket. Um, the barbecue sauce is called frog sauce because mom and pop, pop that cooks all the barbecue, when he rubs it on the brisket, it sounds like ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. And so that's why it's called frog sauce. The traveling princess is enjoying her onion ring. Pretty solid barbecue. So after lunch in Stockton, we drove about an hour to downtown Davis. This is in front of UC Davis, and it's a really neat, vibrant downtown. You know, you go to a lot of downtowns and main streets of California, and they've lost their life and their vibrancy but here there's tons of people just sitting out having a coffee this is like three in the afternoon on a sunday it's a neat college town it's also known for being very bikeable you'll find bike parking all over downtown davis downtown davis is a great place to come and explore if you've got an hour just check it out look at the shops get lunch get dinner and by the way the blossoms here these aren't almond blossoms but there's some other blossoms and it's really windy and it feels like it's snowing that's a stage, at least in Japan, when they talk about cherry blossoms, there's bloom, there's full bloom, and then there's snow about when the petals are coming down. So I think the traveling princess might've got some in her hair. We drove about 30 minutes into the town of Winters where we checked into our hotel, the Hotel Winters. This is a really neat hotel. It's just a couple years old. Our room is really nice. Everything here is spotless, clean, pristine. We had dinner at Putta Creek Cafe where we had some really great farm to fork dining. My pasta was super good. The porchetta portion we had with the sweet potatoes and the spinach, mwah, just to die for. And Winters is a totally neat little town in the middle of nowhere, but that's what makes it so cool, this really preserved little town in the middle of nowhere. But actually it's just 30 miles west of Sacramento, so it's actually not that far nowhere. We had a really great night's sleep at the Hotel Winters. I think definitely one of our favorite rooms and hotels we've stayed at so far on this trip. Now we are at the Seca Farms Olive Mill Tasting Room. Chris, it looks like you're in an almond orchard. They have 500 acres of almond orchards too that are amazing. This was our most north stop for almonds. Truly spectacular. We also had some delicious almond treats that they have once a year for their almond festival. See more of that in the almond video, but this is, this is a really neat place. Yolo County, we really enjoyed the scenery driving through here, particularly driving down this road, great rolling hills. We really felt as we're coming up here, we're kind of getting like a, like a mobile media detox, social media detox, which is funny because we're making YouTube Yay. videos. Isn't that funny? Yeah. But it is funny, I agree. But you know, we didn't really have a lot of 
desire while we're in these almond orchards to get on our phones and things like that. So if you want to get back to nature, it's a great place to do it. All right, fellow explorers, it is time for us to go home now. We've been to Yolo County and this is as far as we need to go. And so now we need to go home. What am I on right now? I'm on a rail bike. This is the Sacramento River Fox Train rail bike. Now you might think it's hard to pedal a rail bike and the good deal is that they're actually electrically assisted so they actually get going pretty fast. The ride is about an hour uh, and it's about six miles, first mile along the river with some neat views right there. Now pedaling seems too much for you. You can actually take a train. There's a train that runs on these tracks uh, and it goes a little bit longer. It takes you a little further into the farmland. You can do wine tasting on it. You can do beer tasting on it. It's a pretty fun attraction, really. I feel like a super big kid riding this rail bike right now. Now, if you decide to do the rail bike, definitely bring a jacket, even in summer, because they get going pretty fast. And ladies, definitely wear some pants. No skirts for this one. So after working up our appetite on those rail bikes, we needed some nourishment. So we stopped by the spot in Sacramento called Guy and Rice. It's a small little shop with like four tables inside that specializes in Thai chicken and rice. You can get the original, almost boiled uh, chicken, uh, or you can get it crispy, or you can get it with both. Comes soup, we got some egg rolls. Looking forward to diving into some of this. So after lunch in Sacramento, we started down to Visalia, our next hotel night, but it's about a four hour drive, so we wanted to break that up. We stopped right in the middle in Hillmar, California at the Hillmar Cheese Visitor Center. If you're not familiar with Hillmar Cheese, they actually make 25% of the American style cheese sold in the US. They have this really neat visitor center where you can get a lot of cheese foods, and you can see them make a 640 pound block of cheese. It's pretty cool. I've never seen cheese being made at quite this industrial scale. This one's definitely a neat stop in the middle of the 99. And definitely make sure you check out their waterfall outside. Now, it's not a milk or dairy waterfall precisely, but it actually turns out that the water they have in this waterfall is the water that used to be in the milk that they've turned into cheese. So this is the closest you're gonna find to a milk waterfall anywhere. So after two more hours of driving from Hillmar Cheese down to Visalia, we checked into the Darling Hotel. This hotel, it's a former 1930s courthouse, renovated, opened within the last couple years. It's truly an amazing hotel. It's only got like 30 rooms. We've got this like amazing corner view, double connected suite. And we came up after we checked into the rooftop bar called the Elderwood. This is like the hip place to be in Visalia. It's like the only rooftop bar here. It feels very reminiscent of like an LA rooftop bar. We're typically not drinkers, but we decided to get some cocktails Elderwood. here. This is the Darling, the name of the hotel. And this has a piece of ice in it that is shaped like a rose. What is the, uh, the Darling? Vodka, cranberry, lemon, maple, cranberry bitters, and grenadine. It's pleasant, it's sour, it has a whole bunch of different tastes kind of together. As not the drinker, often, I'm probably not the best to describe a lot of these drinks. What am I drinking now? This one is the Author's Note, Bullet Rye, Montenegro Lemon Orange, and Peach Bitters. This one's tasty too. Neither of these taste very alcoholic. They've also got a pretty good food menu. We stopped and got some fast food on our way in while we were driving, but we decided to get some dessert. What do we got? A really nice looking creme brulee right there with lots of fresh fruit on it. Let's go ahead and check out the creme brulee first. Ooh, that's a nice caramelized top. Mm, it's very tasty. It's good, it's smooth, it's crispy. OC Girl loves creme brulee. I love carrot cake. So let's go ahead and try the carrot cake. Just so you know, this isn't all for me, right? I'm not drinking two drinks and two desserts. I'm not that much of a glutton. Good nuts, good carrot, good frosting. Also, just a really neat view of the downtown area from here as well. We had a great night at the Darling Hotel and waking up for our final day in California Central Valley. We're at roadside attraction number four, the Sequoia Legacy Tree in downtown Visalia. It's just three short blocks from our hotel. It's next to the post office in downtown Visalia. And why is there a tree? Why is there a Sequoia tree plant down here? Sequoia trees don't naturally grow 
in Visalia in the valley, but they brought this one here from Sequoia National Park because Visalia was instrumental in creating the national park. Chris, why are you walking away from me? What's this thing you're walking on? This path that's around the tree is the diameter of the general Sherman tree in the national park. So you can see these trees actually get really big. And Sequoia National Park is just 45 minutes away from Visalia. But if you can't make it to the national park, you can't make it to see a General Sherman tree, you can see a Sequoia tree right here in downtown Visalia. Fellow explorers, all good things must come to an end, including this trip. Our last meal here is lunch in Visalia at Quesadilla Gorilla. What do they specialize in? They specialize in quesadillas. Do you want to know how this all tastes? Well, then you're going to have to watch my video all about the must-eat foods where we dive into these quesadillas. You'll find the link on the screen to that or in the description below. I really want to thank the cool people from visitcentralvalley.com and Visit California for making this series possible. And as usual, we won't say goodbye because we're going to see you in the next video.